There are thousands of places where processing operations can create areas with hazardous atmospheres. If you have the wrong type of electrical system in a hazardous area, the smallest spark can cause a fire or a devastating explosion. To be safe, you must use special electrical equipment that's designed for use in hazardous areas. The design of this special equipment works to contain an explosion and then slowly vent cool gases to the outside atmosphere. This prevents the ignition of the external atmospheres. The best known guidelines for selecting and installing electrical equipment are contained in the National Electrical Code, or NEC. The NEC is published by the National Fire Protection Association. It's used across many industries and in many parts of the world. Following the NEC keeps operations safer because everyone is using the same rules. It also makes economic sense because the equipment and systems can be installed and maintained with greater ease and it's more cost effective. The purpose of this video is to make you aware of the NEC's classes of hazardous locations, equipment that must be used in hazardous locations, and changes to the 1996 NEC, such as the addition of the IEC zone classification system. The sections of the 1996 NEC that explain this information are Articles 500 through 505 and Articles 510 through 516. A useful tool that can help you understand the code is the Appleton NEC Code Review. In addition, you must also follow OSHA regulations, state and local codes, and the requirements of standards writing and testing organizations such as Underwriters Laboratories, Factory Mutual, and other third-party organizations. The traditional NEC method classifies hazardous locations based upon the type and the quantity of ignitable material present. There are three classes. Class one has explosive or flammable gases or vapors. Class two has combustible dusts. Class three has ignitable fibers or flyings. You must select the equipment that is rated for the class of hazard present. Class one is where explosive or flammable gases or vapors are present. Some examples of class one areas are petrochemical and solvent processing operations, recycling plants, sewage treatment areas, food processing plants, pharmaceutical manufacturing, and paint spray operations. These class one locations are typically the most common and the most hazardous. Equipment in these areas must be designed to withstand the most violent explosive levels. In class two locations, combustible dusts may be present in the atmosphere or on equipment. Examples of class two areas are grain elevators, cold handling operations, and many types of processing operations. Often, dust explosions are even more violent than vapor explosions. In class two areas, equipment must be designed to prevent dust ignition. This is accomplished by sealing out dusts and preventing interior arcs, sparks, or heat from causing exterior dust explosions. This equipment is called dust ignition proof. Because dust often builds up on equipment in a class two area, the equipment must be designed to operate at a temperature that is cooler than the ignition temperature of the dusts. This prevents igniting the dust blanket or dust clouds. A class three hazardous location is any area where ignitable fibers or flyings are present. The main concern with fibers and flyings is the fire hazard created when they collect on equipment and cause heat buildup. Cotton and textile operations are good examples of class three areas. Equipment in Class 3 locations must be dust tight, prevent the escape of sparks, operate at a temperature below combustion, and the external temperature on fixtures, motors, and other equipment must not exceed 165 degrees Celsius. In addition to defining the type and quantity of material present, the NEC also defines the conditions under which the hazard exists. If the hazard is present under normal conditions, such as operations, the location is defined as a Division I area. If the hazard is present only in abnormal circumstances, such as an accidental rupture, the location is defined as a Division II area. The code also divides atmospheres into groups. The group is a rating of the explosiveness of the specific gases, vapors, and dusts. 
To determine the group, you simply look up the hazardous material in a reference chart. To help you identify the proper group, you can look in the Appleton Code Review or the NEC. In Class 1, Gases and Vapors, there are four groups labeled A, B, C, and D. Group A is the most explosive group and creates the highest pressures during explosion. These are atmospheres containing acetylene gases which are the most difficult to control. Group B creates the second highest explosive pressures. It includes atmospheres with hydrogen and other combustible process gases. In Group C, ethylene is a common example. Group D refers to atmospheres containing gasoline, solvent vapors, natural gas, propane, acetone, and others. Group C and D atmospheres are the most commonly encountered gases in industry. For Class II dust, the groups are E, F, and G. Group E consists of the metal dusts. Metal dusts, such as aluminum and magnesium, can be electrically conducted. Because of this, Group E dusts are always considered Division I. Metal dusts are the only Class II group that are Division I. Group F consists of coal, graphite, and similar dusts. And Group G consists of grain, plastic, and chemical dusts. For Class III, fibers and flyings, the hazards are considered similar and aren't divided into groups. Now for a quick review. If it's a gas or vapor, it's class one. If it's combustible dusts, it's class two. And if it's ignitable fibers or flyings, it's class three. If the atmospheres are normally present, it's division one. If the atmospheres are abnormally present, the area is division two. The group indicates the explosive properties of the hazard. If an area has more than one type of hazard, you must have equipment approved for each hazard type. Explosion control design works by keeping the explosion inside the enclosure and then very slowly venting and cooling the burning gases. Venting cooled gases prevents ignition of atmospheres outside of the equipment. You also want to confine any explosion to the immediate enclosure area with seal-off fittings. We'll talk more about seal-off fittings in a moment. Here's an example of a precision ground joint design. The thick walls contain the internal explosion. The ground joint cover allows the gases to slowly escape at a cooler temperature. This threaded joint design features a cover with a minimum of five threads that engage with the body. When an explosion occurs, the force of the explosion pushes the flames and hot gases around the five threads, allowing them to cool and escape harmlessly. Here are some examples of specialized electrical equipment designed for Class I, Division I locations. An HID lighting fixture, a receptacle, a panel board, a push button, a switch, a motor starter, a fitting, a union, a seal, and a drain. Class I, Division I areas make up no more than five to 10% of all hazardous locations. Here are some examples of specialized equipment for Class I, Division II areas. A lighting fixture, a panel board, explosion-proof LED pilot lights, control stations for remote control of motors, different fittings, explosion-proof tumbler switches, and selector switches. If you refer to the manufacturer's catalog, you'll note that many products with Class I ratings are also approved for Class II areas. The code also defines some special hazardous locations. Examples of special locations include filling stations, automobile repair shops, paint spray booths, and aircraft hangars. Filling stations are outdoor locations that use space rather than partitions to separate Division I and Division II areas. The Division II area is the transition zone between the Division I area and the non-hazardous area. Paint spray areas probably have more code violations than any other areas. Article 516 of the NEC details specific guidelines for these areas. In Class I, Division I areas, arc producing equipment must be contained in Class I, Division I enclosures. For more information on special areas, check the NEC. 
New in Article 505 of the 1996 NEC is the option of using the International Electrotechnical Commission, or IEC, zone classification system. The zone system classifies equipment according to the type of protection it offers. Equipment approved for use in a zone may be used in a Class I area. The zone system provides the designer with another option for specifying equipment. When the zone system is used, area classification, equipment selection, and wiring must be under the supervision of a qualified registered professional engineer. In this chart is a visual comparison of the NEC Class 1, Division 1 and 2 hazardous areas and the IEC Zone 0, 1 and 2 areas. A Class 1, Zone 0 area has ignitable concentrations of gases present continuously. A Class 1, Zone 1 area has ignitable concentrations present under normal conditions or frequently. In a Class 1, Zone 2 area, gases are not likely to occur under normal operations, and if they do, it will only happen for a short time. Most products from Appleton can be used in division and zone areas. Class 1, Division 1 equipment is suitable for use in Class 1, Zones 1 and 2. Division 2 equipment is suitable for use in Class 1, Zone 2. For safety purposes, product nameplates on equipment must list the class, division, group, the zone, and third-party listings, such as Underwriters Laboratories, UL, or Canadian Standards Association, CSA. Here are some examples of equipment with zone ratings. Merc Master 3, Area Master Floodlight, Division 2 Contender Control Stations, Unicode Control Stations, and FZ Fluorescent Fixtures. In a Class 1 Division 1 area, the surface temperature of the equipment must be less than the ignition temperature of the vapor present. Equipment that is heat producing, such as fixtures and motors, are all tested and assigned T numbers. The T number is a rating that indicates the maximum external surface temperature of the equipment. The T number relates to a temperature range chart in the NEC. Higher T numbers indicate cooler running equipment. The T number must appear on equipment nameplates. For Division II areas, the lamp hotspot inside of the lighting fixture must have a T rating less than the ignition temperature of the gas present. For Class II Divisions I and II areas, the exposed surface temperature must not exceed the ignition temperature of the dust present. Zone T ratings are the same as Class Division T ratings, except that they don't have the letter suffixes. Whenever you're specifying equipment for electrical systems in hazardous locations, refer to equipment manufacturer's catalogs. Each manufacturer's catalog will identify their products by the class, group, division, and if it applies, the zone. You must confirm that selected equipment meets the NEC requirements for the area in which you'll be using the equipment. Seal-off fittings are one of the most important hazardous area safety products. They work to contain explosions and minimize the passage of flames, gases, and vapors in conduit. In some cases, explosion-proof equipment is connected by conduit to non-explosion-proof equipment located in ordinary or non-hazardous areas. Flammable gases or vapors can get into the conduit and follow it back to the non-explosion-proof equipment. The result can be a fire or explosion. Properly installed conduit seals control this hazard. Often, equipment is factory sealed. The NEC and the Appleton Code Review booklet provide further details on where and how seal-offs must be used. To keep operations running smoothly and safely, it's very important that explosion-proof equipment be kept in proper working order. Flange surfaces and threads must be clean and undamaged. All threads must be properly tightened. If these conditions can't be met, then the equipment must be replaced. Most of what we've talked about so far has dealt with rigid conduit systems used in hazardous areas. The 1996 NEC details where and how certain types of cable and listed fittings are approved for use in Class I, Division I, and Division II areas. Cable is especially popular in areas using the zone system of classification. For more information, see the Appleton NEC Code Review Booklet.
In this program, we discuss the NEC's classifications for hazardous areas. And some of the technologies that control the hazards in these locations. Remember, whenever equipment is being installed, you must comply with all applicable local, state, and federal guidelines. When you have questions, ask for assistance. Because our common goal is staying safe.